Welcome to the Spiron presentation on quality of service in modern IP networks. This presentation is going to focus primarily on the three mechanisms used in differentiated services. Quality of service in the modern IP network is increasingly important. A few years ago, when we were only transporting data across our networks, quality of service wasn't quite as important as it is today. When we were moving data files across the network or email traffic, whether that traffic took 50 milliseconds, 500 milliseconds, or perhaps even a full second, most of us wouldn't be too aware. But in today's modern network with applications such as voice over IP, the rapid delivery of good quality traffic across the network is becoming increasingly important. To deliver good voice quality across the network today, we're talking about tens of milliseconds in terms of delivery time across the network. And it's also important to stress that in voice communication, we need good full duplex communication. We need good low latency, low loss traffic conditions in both directions. Surprisingly, video is a little bit more tolerant. Typically, video can be streaming in one direction only. And due to the fact in many applications video is non-real-time, it's possible to buffer the video for a second or so and to compensate for errors within the network. Of course, this isn't true if you're running in a video conferencing environment. But for streaming video, as I said, surprisingly, it can be a little bit more forgiving than real-time voice over IP applications. Over the years, there have been a number of different mechanisms, or RFCs, for defining the type of service, that's what we originally called it, uh, or class of service that the traffic was to experience when um, transmitted across the network. Today, we typically refer to the field which defines a quality of service as the traffic class. And the popular mechanisms used today are typically referred to as differentiated services. RFC 2474 is perhaps in some ways one of the oldest mechanisms for defining the quality of service of your packets as they move across the network. Prior to RFC 2474, we had RFC 1394, and prior to that, 791, which I believe goes all the way back to 1981 and the original DARPA network. However, today, RFC 2474 is part of the differentiated services family. If we take a look at the traffic class field, we can see, of course, it's made up of eight different bits. Six of these bits are actually used to define the quality of service. However, bits three, four, and five, by definition, must be set to zero. So in reality, only bits zero, one, and two are used to define the quality of service which this packet is going to experience as it moves across the network. If all the bits are set to 1, it indicates that the packet is to receive the highest class of service across the network when using this mechanism. So although we could theoretically have many more combinations due to the fact we're only using three bits, we only actually have eight possible variants or eight different types of service using RFC 2474. If we look at the last two bits, bit 6 and 7, these are used for explicit congestion notification defined by RFC 3168. If you're experiencing congestion, then these two bits will be set to 1-1, typically by the host or the router. If you're not actually capable of experiencing or defining this type of mechanism, then these bits will be set to 0. If you are uh, capable of supporting this RFC, then these bits can be set to either 0, 1, or 1, 0 to define that you are actually explicit congestion notification capable. RFC 2598, expedited forwarding, or EF for short, is also part of the differentiated services group. We use the same field in the IP header. Again, we make use of the eight bits. Um, however, there is only one unique bit pattern to define this class of service. If you see the bit pattern 101110 um, in bits 0 through 5, this indicates that this packet is to be given the highest possible class of service that the network is capable of delivering. Um, this isn't often used as another type of service, another type of differentiated services. Assured forwarding, which I'll talk about in a moment, is actually becoming increasingly more popular. 
Again, you have the ability to use explicit congestion notification using RFC 3168. RFC 2597, or Assured Forwarding, AF for short, is perhaps one of the most popular mechanisms used today within corporate or enterprise networks for defining traffic class or the prioritization that different streams of traffic are going to take when they move across the network. Again, we use six bits within the traffic class field. The last two bits again used for explicit congestion notification with RFC 3168. There are actually four distinct classes defined by RFC 2597, but within each one of these classes there are three subclasses. So in total you're going to get 12 different services which are defined by RFC 2597. If we take a look at these different types of classes, you can see on this diagram we have class 1 through to class 4. Class 1 with a low drop probability is going to give us the highest class of service, 001010, while class 4, 100110, would indicate a high drop probability. So class 4 with a high drop probability would in fact be the lowest class of service. As you can see, with 12 different types of service, defined with RFC 2597, we have more than enough different types of services which can be used for uh, voice over IP, streaming video, web browsing, file transfer, uh, etc. So assured forwarding today is perhaps one of the most popular mechanisms used within the corporate environment. Using equipment from Spirant, such as the Spirant Test Center, it's actually possible to test the cloud prior to deployment. That is, rather than allowing your customers to be the guinea pigs to find out how well the network is operating, you test it uh, prior to turning it up with real live customers to verify that the different classes of service can be handled correctly. Here, for example, the Spire and Test Center is generating three different types of uh, service, class one, class two, and class three. It's more than capable of generating class four as well, but to keep things simple, I chose just three. Each class has got a low drop, medium drop, and high drop probability. And basically, I was testing the cloud's ability to differentiate the different types of service that the uh, test center was going to generate, um, basically emulating the different types of service that the network would, would be expected to support. And these are the types of results you would see on a graph when operating the Spire and Test Center. Here we can see the traffic loss or the different rates of traffic that are going to propagate through the cloud depending on how they're prioritized. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. If you'd like more information on Spirant equipment and products, please visit our website at www.spirant.com. And while you're there, don't forget to check the website to see if there's going to be a live seminar near you coming soon. For a copy of this presentation, you can visit my wiki at alantestwiki.pbwiki.com. You can download other presentations from the wiki as well, plus some other useful tools. If you'd like to look at other videos on YouTube, please search on Alan Talks Tech. Once again, thank you for viewing this presentation.